soybeans, like all other legume crops, have the ability to live in symbiosis with rhizobium bacteria, where the plant provides the bacteria with carbohydrates and sugars, while the rhizobium fixes nitrogen from the soil and makes this available to the plant. In order for this to take place, the seed must be inoculated by the bacteria before or during planting. Proper inoculation of soybean seed is one of the most important aspects of soybean cultivation and can be seen as the least expensive input with the greatest advantage for the farmer. It is crucial that inoculants are treated with care because they are living organisms and can easily be killed by high temperatures or by direct exposure to the sun. Rhizobium bacteria require molybdenum, but this element is unavailable to the plant in soils with a low pH. It is therefore essential that the pH of the soil is close to neutral. When soils are planted for the first time with soybeans, both the seed and the soil surrounding the seed must be inoculated with rhizobium. Inoculation must be monitored. More than 10 to 12 nodules per plant indicate adequate inoculation. A leaf analysis will also show if inoculation is sufficient. Inoculants are sold by different companies. If the manufacturer's instructions are followed when applying the inoculant before the expiry date, good results can be achieved. The only strain of Rhizobium japonicum that is approved in South Africa is WB74. When inoculating the seed, it is important not to use excess water when wetting the seed before the inoculant is placed on the seed. A carrier is used to ensure that the rhizobium sticks to the seed. The seed coating after inoculation will appear either black or white depending on which type of carrier is used by the company selling the inoculant. Some companies provide inoculants in a liquid form which can be applied to the seed in the plant furrow using specially built applicators fitted to the planter. Dry inoculants can be suspended in water and applied in the same way, in which case an electrical squeeze pump is used to prevent pipes from becoming blocked. This is an example of good inoculation with many active brady rhizobium nodules. Notice the placement of the nodules on the roots of the soybean plants. Both the size and number of nodules is important. If the nodules are large, then more than six nodules per plant would be sufficient to meet the nitrogen requirements of the soybean plant. It is rare, but not unusual, to find more than 50 nodules on roots of some soybean plants, but this must be seen as a bonus. Active nitrogen binding nodules have a reddish pink color when opened, whereas a dull whitish color indicates that no binding has taken place. Greenish colored nodules are those in which active binding has previously taken place, but because the plant has entered the maturing stage, these are no longer active. When there is a problem with binding of nitrogen, the symptoms are similar to those of nitrogen deficiency. Plants and leaves are smaller and have a light yellowish color. Plants that have been correctly inoculated show no nitrogen deficiency symptoms and have a dark green color. This is an example of poor inoculation in a soybean field due to blocked pipes. The plants in the adjacent rows are not even able to steal nitrogen from the properly inoculated soybeans. The complete absence of nodules on roots of soybeans where no inoculants were applied is responsible for these small yellow soybean plants. A good root system with many secondary and hair roots is ideal, but sometimes a root system with very few secondary and hair roots can be just as efficient because the root system is genetically determined. The plants with the root systems as shown here 
were only 45 centimeters apart, but were from different cultivars. Eventual yields were similar, which shows that the root system with few secondary roots was sufficient in providing the plant with water and nutrients. Soybeans leave between 20 and 35 kilograms of nitrogen in the soil after harvesting, through the decay of the nodules responsible for binding nitrogen. It is therefore not surprising that the yield of maize after soybeans can be as much as 10 to 20 percent higher than that of maize after maize. The presence of up to about 35 kilograms nitrogen per hectare left by decayed nodules means that less nitrogen has to be applied to the follow-up crop in order to achieve high yields. 